controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. So today we'll be talking up uh, whoa. <laughs> Today we'll be walking. Oh my god, I already got to get my 20 minute walk in. Ah! We're going to be talking about cell phone use in regards to how it's physically altering our body, not necessarily our brain. We'll talk about that a little bit, but this is going to be more about the things it's doing to our eyes, our backs. Is it having the impact considering that we are now on these things all the time? Like there it feels like there has to be some sort of like repercussion outside because yeah. you are working on slash might have released a video soon about your brain the impact on your brain yeah right? and the impact on your brain is real y'all phone addiction is real <laughs> hot take we've been saying this for years <laughs> truly Aesop science has been making videos about this what for 10 years like honestly <laughs> yeah. it's so scary because you're like we've done research like all the research one could probably do and still are just like struggling so hard i think that's phones. like not the definition but like goes to show how powerful an addiction can be or just even like a dependence on like despite knowing something is bad for you yeah. and wanting to stop not really having control that over like it, is so. some of the definitions of addiction around this are that like knowing that it's negatively impacting your life and not being able to stop like ding 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 mm -hmm. and then relapse like truly trying to minimize your phone use and not being able to, yeah. which is something that I relate to fully. Like I am addicted and maybe if I think about it impacting my body, I'll have a gosh. It actually gives me the heavy jibbies when I think about it. Yeah. Like I where I'm know. just kind of like, Oh, it is like compulsive. And I just like, it's compulsive. Freaks me out. It's so scary to not have control over. Like, I'm not a control over ink, but like, yeah, I mean, maybe <laughs> I am. But like, it's so scary. You're not really. I'm You're not, not a control freak. No. Oh. I think, oh. <laughs> and I, oh. Like, I guess it depends on the circumstance. No, I don't. Like, I don't want to be a control freak. So I'm pretty good if I ever feel like I am being one of being like, okay, Greg, namaste. <laughs> Calm down. But I don't like not having control role of my and being life. aware of it and realizing yeah. It, yeah and i beat myself up a lot like i think i beat myself up about phone use and just so people know like i don't know what order of like this pod will be up before your video but in your video i know you're going to talk about like strategies from a science perspective and, and how to get control on it so people who are listening can either check out the video or keep an eye out for that yeah. video because we probably won't touch on that stuff in this yeah podcast. yeah yeah we won't we're going to talk about your body because one thing I left out of the video that was interesting was just like the actual effect that it has on the nerve of the hand that you're holding the phone uh, with. Sometimes I think about like this the underside median, of my right it's hand. literally that. Yeah. The median nerve. Because my finger goes, where's my phone? It's not here. But it, like my fingers go under to hold it, right? And then you're just, it's like pushing down. Well, I always think, and sometimes I'm like, I need to start using my left hand for my phone because yeah, I've been so holding it for so long, my right hand. The median nerve starts at your shoulder, goes down through, and it goes to all of your fingers. And it like doesn't necessarily connect to your pinky. Is that oh. what you're worried about? Your pinky? Or I'm trying to think. I'm going to literally grab my phone just so I can feel it. Because it talking. doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, the issue isn't actually that part of your hand, the bottom part of your hand. The issue is around your wrist. Yeah. Okay. I, but I, I start to feel it like I, I rest my phone on my pinky like this for anyone who's watching. And I just feel like sometimes wow, my Wow. You hold your cramped. phone gay. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, obviously. How do you hold yours? I hold it like. Like I grip like it like a person. football, like mask. You for literally a mask. hold it like. But then, how do you I, like no, type I'm with absolutely it? Absolutely kidding. Oh. I do not hold it like that. No, what I do notice is that so many mask for mask gays slash probably straight guys when they take photos in the mirror, they do that. Do they what? hold their phone in this like, like and it, like gripping. they're clearly flexing their like freaking arm. Oh. It's so fun. That's when you can Versus tell that like they're like, like yeah, that they've taken a hundred <laughs> photos and like chosen the one. <laughs> Anyways. The median nerve goes from your shoulder and the issue is that through your wrist, the actual nerve is growing because of how we're holding our phone so uh, much that the physical nerve is getting bigger and getting trapped and creating carpal tunnel in people's wrists and hands like on mass. Oh and God. everyone's just like, okay, well that's from your phone. And it's like, what do you do other than mitigate your phone use? And then also they do think people are getting more hunched and I have a hunch and I call it my Drake hunch. And I'm like, is it because of my phone? I think I, I've always had it, but yeah, but it could be exacerbated by like, and I also think, and I don't like to admit this, but you know, I yet again had like a back injury pop up the same one that kind of always comes up for me every this year. I've had it many, many times. And I do think sometimes it's exasperated by 
me looking at my phone too much. Oh my God. Because for the longest time I used to be like, it happens a lot when I'm on planes because if I fall asleep, my head goes down to this angle and like pulls. And then often with that inactivity, I just am now noticing sometimes when I've like sat on, sat down on my phone for a long time, like not only is my neck sore, not only does it feel like hunchback vibes, I'm way more likely to have my back go in the next mm. couple of days. That is crazy. So I feel like it it's is pulling crazy. on like, something. As adults before phones, we didn't, we walked around and we didn't do that. Stare down. We didn't stare down. I mean, I guess there was like Game Boys and stuff, but no, like, but even you know, previous like before thirty that. years ago, it's like we're. I guess people like read books and stuff though for a long time. Yeah, us trying to like make like be like yeah, they read books. I mean, obviously they weren't like holding them for eleven hours like now. People are using yeah. their phone. Well, for, like, the, <laughs> the carpal tunnel thing that is increasing now because of phone use would happen because of like people who were cooking to a lot. Say that again, sorry. The carpal tunnel media nerve increase in size when people cook. So it's like there are okay. ways, other activities. Yeah. yeah. Nothing like our phone use though. That's like why yeah. they're and it's called the laborer's nerve. So like if you like construction workers would have had this, but now like everyone's getting it because they're all Yeah. On their I used to um I used to wear a brace because I thought I had carpal tunnel or like my doctor had because I played a lot of piano and tennis, which I think are both like um like activities that can inflame your tennis tennis yeah oh right people get t- ten well i know tendonitis is not the same as carpal tunnel but they're both kind of in the same spot right i think it can aggravate tennis that is area. Like and and piano is like really intense like on your wrist yeah. if you're not like nice and loose like i was trying to teach you how to have like a loose wrist so my thing in order to not get that is i just never practice piano <laughs> and when i was in piano i'd just be like i'm actually not gonna play it <laughs> you're like i'm protecting my I'm just wrist gonna here. fail <laughs> yeah um yeah i don't know i wasn't gonna say anything another thing is that there's a huge increase increase in nearsightedness and they really think that it could be impacted by phones so in the 1970s, a quarter of North America had myopia, and now nearly half of Americans have it. So it's like, okay. So our physically eyes. damaging us. In our eyes, which it, it all makes sense. Like yeah, what if you're just staring at something close. staring at a screen. And it's just because of its addictive potential. Like, you're right about books, but, like, people just weren't. Um, it wasn't like every time they like ordered a coffee, like, in between getting the coffee, they picked up their book and read, like, two sentences. Like, we're yeah. all just doing that. That was one of the questions about addiction was like, do you find that you're on your phone rather than talking to a barista? Like that's a sign that you're addicted. And I was like, whoa. Oh, it was very oh, that's specific. nice. I love talking to a barista. Yeah, but I was like, that is an interesting. But sometimes they don't want to talk to you. Yeah, sometimes they're on their phone. It's like, okay, Slay, so like you're addicted. <laughs> but it is interesting. Like those little moments are the moments of like phone addiction that are crazy. That wouldn't have existed before. No. Yeah, because you wouldn't like pull a book out or something to distract you for the like, two minutes you're waiting for your coffee you just stand there but it is kind of unreal how it is like wow to stand and do nothing for two minutes not only is it difficult it's crazy you immediately go like cause sometimes i'm like oh i'm just gonna sit here and wait but i'm like where did people look before cell phones because then i'm like i'm just staring at people and it feels weird if i'm that's just- why they weren't near <laughs> they, were, they were looking in the like little bit of distance Oh my god! You know I don't I mean? even I don't even know because I've never done that. I get my phone out so fast. Sometimes, like even like waiting at an airport, I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna just like sit here for a bit and not stare at something one foot in front of my face. But then I'm like, now I'm like awkwardly staring at people. Actually, I love doing that. Yeah, you are like, and you have no discomfort staring at people. <laughs> Nope. And when they're fully aware of it nope. too, like you will just like look and eavesdrop and fully like mouth agape listening to their <laughs> drama. And I'm like, Greg, they're watching you watch them. Are they though? I feel like they're not. Not they're always, but I'm, I'm just, just like watching. hyper aware. I'm like of, drooling. Like, I'm like, watching. and I'm like, there's a way to do it where you can be more discreet. No, but I feel like I need to like eavesdropping is hard. You have to really focus. You have to look and you have to really listen. And so I feel like I'm like, I really need to know what these two people are saying. <laughs> and I have to, my body has to be like that. I think if I don't, then I don't, I don't get to hear. I'm now realizing I so am obsessed with eavesdropping that I'm going to now use my phone less and actively just be like, okay, now I get to eavesdrop. <laughs> yeah, you're good at that because I don't have that. I start to get overly insecure and then I'm like, I just like have to stare at the floor and the roof and then I'm like, do I look crazy? I'm just like staring. I'm off. truly going to try and use this because and be like, and I encourage other people, 
eavesdrop <laughs> instead of using your phone. It's so interesting. But that doesn't mean be creepy. No, no, I, I don't Sometimes care. We're I'm also like, addicted. Be creepy. <laughs> be creepy. Obviously, don't no, like don't be, be too creepy. But you, like, listen to people. Listen. It's so too, yeah. interesting, and it's such a great me trying to like literally justify something that is like maybe <laughs> bad, but it's so fun. But that's what I'm like. What did people do before? Was it just daydream? Or was it just like actually engage more with the environment by looking at people and listening to people? I think there was a lot of like, oh, how do you do that, like miss? Just chatting oh, more. chit chat. But I mean, like sitting on, now if you go on the subway, like everyone's on their phone. I mean, yeah. some people are on books, but most people are on their phone. It's rare that somebody's just like staring into well, space without headphones in. This is like part of like, it's not fair to directly be like the mental health crisis and all this stuff like there's also so much more awareness definitely people in like the 80s and 90s like on transit like were also depressed but like they were maybe more bored throughout the day mm. and that is a very important like good thing for your brain which we don't have access to anymore and because we are so is what the video is about, like having such high dopamine rewards constantly on our phone. That's why we're addicted to them and why we're on them on the subway, why they're playing a game or looking at photos or doing whatever. It is making it harder to feel the excitement of day-to-day -day life without your phone. Mm -hmm. So they probably were on the subway and they probably were more bored and they were obviously daydreaming and maybe right. they were talking to strangers more, but they were probably planning their evening right. or deciding what they're going to do when they get home mm -hmm. and maybe they were like oh god i'm so bored and it's like i do That's imagine good. in that <laughs> scenario like a lot more people would have just been like reading or having some other form of entertainment but a lot you're right oh my god like us weekly was newspaper. flying off the shelves <laughs> yeah like they're exactly newspapers but all of those things are better for your brain like not the they're not designed to truly like hijack yeah they're not brain. hijacking your dopamine systems which is the issue that we're in right now they were giving you like bouts of dopamine but the issue now is people have a hard time delaying gratification because they use their phone so much. You're kind of delaying gratification by reading like a long article in a newspaper or mm -hmm. reading a book. All these yeah, things you have are, to navigate an entire thing in order to get the reward, which is kind of finishing yeah, yeah. the article and understanding the thing. Yeah. Which so, is very different than just like getting a message, getting a tweet, getting a like, get it, watching 300 TikToks in like one minute. <laughs> you know and it mean? is like they, there's so many studies about how important it is to like truly talk to strangers and those little interactions are important that mm -hmm. are not happening because of our phones. And so they're physically changing our bodies, obviously, but they're also physically changing how we interact in public spaces. Well, I want to talk about now brain tumors as they correlate to cell phone use. Oh my God. Um, because obviously this is not like physical in the sense that we were talking about, but I kind of thought, okay, that is something that has been a longstanding fear. Yeah. That's like the use of cell phones by your head or sleeping beside your cell yeah. phone or especially like talking on your cell phone because it's like right beside your brain. Yeah. Does it increase the Good thing I don't ever do that. I actually just text. <laughs> yeah, it is actually Ew. surprising how we've like gone like past the point where I'm almost never actually using my phone. As that's a, as also a phone. bad. Like there was a study about how people who use their phone more are less likely to call people on their phone. People who use their phone more are less likely yeah. to have phone conversations. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, I, I guess I like video chat with my family, but that's kind of it. Like I don't, Me too. and then I, the only people I call, it's like sad. It'll be like, not to like drag our accountant, but that's like the person I have to call the most. Yeah, or it's like a credit card string. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm not like, like hey. someone I'm having a nice conversation yeah. with. In fact, the other day our friend called me and it was like, I almost got spooked because I was like, oh, I haven't like answered a friend's phone call in so oh, long. I know, and that's why, and it's also evil because they're all, they're like, you're always on your phone. I'm like, oh, I randomly didn't pick up. It's like, because I'm staring at it like being horrified. Like, mm, they'll being text. Like, yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> okay, so brain tumors. So, um, this conversation has kind of come back into the limelight. There's been a mix of studies in the past that weren't sure that some would find correlation. Again, correlation is not causation, um, but it was like always a muddled mess, quote unquote. But now that this like 5G has become back in the conversation, it's brought this topic back up, right? Oh yeah, I remember when everyone thought like, 5G, 5G like made COVID or something. Yeah. Like, I don't even remember. Like, didn't we even make a video where we were like, the 5G didn't cause COVID? Yeah, yeah. It was like, <laughs> like that do, was a do we really have part to make of the this? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. 
So the fear is that the radio frequencies being released so close to your head is bad for you. Um, and the International Agency for Research on Cancer has in the past classified radio frequency waves as possibly carcinogenic. Yeah, which I mean, according to the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, obviously as sense. you get into like microwaves yeah. and UV light and stuff, there are things that are carcinogenic. And 5G is a different wavelength. Yeah. So the the problem with all the old studies that the, is that they were retrospective, whereas this new study is prospective, which means that they brought people in the study before they had a disease or a problem. Hmm. Whereas retrospective is like looking at somebody who maybe has a brain tumor and then asking them over the last 20 years, what was your cell phone use like? Hmm. So obviously there's like a lot more, you're a lot more prone to like uh, misremembering and quoting stats in a different way or like it's a harder, it's not quite as like, what would you say? like accurate as a prospective study where you mm -hmm. can actually track people's usage and then correlate it later. Um, <clears throat> so this had over 700,000 women who were being studied since 2001. Hmm. Then half of them were surveyed again in 2011 and then followed over like a 14 year period specifically for the study. Huh. Um, during this period, 0 0.42 developed brain tumors just in general. But the ultimate discovery was that there was no significant difference between the risk of developing a brain tumor based on your mobile phone use. Okay. Does that good. make sense? So yes. like, even though people do develop brain tumors, it was like those who use their phone and those who didn't had no real difference. Um, even they like tested like, okay, are brain tumors more likely to appear on the right side of the brain or the left side? And does it correlate with like the side of the brain that people are putting their phones near? Uh, it was, the same thing. It didn't like track with that. Oh my, thank God. Imagine the caveat that. though, was that it was mo this all kind of averaged around like an average user. And they were saying like, this didn't come into consideration with people who were like extremely high users on average. These people were talking on their phone for like 20 minutes a week, 20 to 30 minutes a week, which well, is like maybe normal. Like, cause I honestly don't talk on my phone that much. Is it week. like, um, is it, they're not including people who use their phone more and just having it around them more. It was just talking about talking on the phone. This was, um, I guess in general their use, but that one part about actually talking with, it, it was about general phone use, but obviously the concern is like the phone's beside my head. It does make sense. It's not causing it. Yeah, yeah. But I guess it's just saying maybe who knows if somebody used it 500 hours a week beside their head, they don't have enough yeah, evidence yeah. to like make any claims around like extreme usage. Imagine it did. Like, we would have known about that. Stuff. Maybe not, though, because think about, like, smoking, how long it took to be like, oh, oh it causes cancer, you know? Like, there's lots of things that are... And obviously, there's a vested interest from, like, cell phone companies and all these places that, like, like smoking companies probably stifled like, research for a long time. I'm yeah. not saying that's happening. I'm no, just saying no. if it were a real thing... Well, the, the more that they see it links to all these, like, crazy mental health issues, it's like, maybe in our lifetime it'll get regulated somehow. I wonder, yeah, especially, uh, I don't know, can... Like, cigarette smoke has been regulated quite intensely in the last, like, yes, four years. Yes, but not from your personal use perspective. Yeah. It's always been... It's not that it's easier to legislate, but it's easier to protect other people. Like, because everyone's allowed to make their own decisions about oh their own body. Oh, my God. It's like those, like gratitude cafes where it's like no cell phone wait is that restaurant a wait what <laughs> well there's like aren't there like those restaurants that have like a little uh, pad like a beside where they like encourage you putting your phone i do love that i've never been to one of those but like i like the idea of just being like let's if everyone commits no one feels weird it is so funny because like with smoking there was probably a time where people were like well then i'm not going to that restaurant mm. restaurants were afraid of losing business and right now everyone's a smoker and there it would just be a, the business would just get shuttered it's like but it, it might be novel enough that's like every business needs a way to attract attention mm. and sometimes going for a niche audience that's like oh that is a cute idea yeah the no phone restaurant yeah it's whether or not you decide as a restaurant to be like that's actually a rule or if it's like we have this spot here. We encourage you to use it, but obviously we're not like going to kick you out if you. Yeah. And it is kind of funny <laughs> if you're the person on your phone at that restaurant where everyone's mm -hmm. like put it here. It's kind of like, well, that's embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, that must Have you exist. ever done that? Like been to a restaurant like that? I mean, in my head, it's like everything starts in like London, New York, LA, Tokyo. Like I'm sure <laughs> there's like here yet. <laughs> some there, but I'm like, maybe they're making its way here. <laughs> like that's just the way things are. Like Copenhagen definitely has one. Mm -hmm. Toronto is a little bit like phase two of trends. Yeah. 
We're like, we just got charcoal ice cream and everyone's <laughs> shitting black. I'm kidding. Like we got that like two years ago or whatever. But you're right. It's like you hear about a trend and then like yeah. suddenly it's in. Toronto. Like I just, I'm not saying that I, it would be really surprising to me if this didn't exist. But if it yeah. didn't, then ASAP Science were quitting and we're opening restaurants. <laughs> I love how often you're like, we're going to open a bar or we're going to open a restaurant. Oh, it's I like, really want to open yeah, a gay bar. And you don't realize that that is hell. Like, yeah, no. I, so I, many people are like, hey, we are not in that industry at all. So to just be like, we're just going to open a restaurant. Like, I really <laughs> want to open a gay bar for every reason that's not real. I want to be able to control music. <laughs> There's a lacking <laughs> get queer West End Toronto presence mm-hmm. of which people are dying for. Like when you go west of Bathurst, like, everyone's queer and mm-hmm. it's like there's no bars like and the v- gay village in toronto this is such a side note <laughs> this is such <laughs> a side note for those listening of like phone use and they're like you're not talking about the gay village in toronto <laughs> the gay village in toronto is so busy there are yeah, so many gay people here it's crazy there's not enough spaces and they're all closing all the like ideas are great the only thing i don't want to have to do is like the work. open the rest <laughs> yeah like do the like finance it and like yeah, keep i don't it even running. mind the financing Mar- i don't i don't want well, to have like, to like market it and i don't want to have to like be like did you fill up the glass or wait that's not <laughs> even no, no, no. <laughs> or did you wash the glasses frank like oh, it's like you know what i mean like I yeah I the don't actual do running of, of the rest yeah, of, yeah you yeah. just want to be a dj that's like um, literally all you want. I never will say it out loud because, I mean, can you think of anything worse? But yes, I want to <laughs> be a DJ. I even want a restaurant just so I can control the music. That's what I mean. You just want to be a DJ. Yeah. You but should just no. apply for like to a bar and be like, I would love to host a queer night and I'll be the DJ. Okay. So this is That's another probably one a my safer ideas. way to like dally okay, or what do you I say, don't like, even necessarily want to be the DJ. I just have, as we said earlier, control issues and I want to control the music. And so that's this called is being no, a DJ. no, this is another idea that I have. <laughs> it's called the iPod Shuffle Night. And there's like, instead of a DJ, a little glass orb and inside is an iPod Shuffle with preloaded songs that no one can touch. And it's like, you just let it go and then everyone's just like waiting around this like but like it's your ipod touch yeah so but i have (laughs) but like that doesn't have to be known it's just like the ipod does it and then i could even show up and be like this music's so good (laughs) everyone's like who's the owner who's the owner yeah there's gonna be a brawl that breaks out and someone's gonna smash and try and be like i gotta put something else on this well i mean blog tia would go off and then (laughs) there's our publicity anyways so cell phones maybe we would have a no cell phone policy and then we would have a hard time promoting it. I do think though, that something is going to have to happen around cell phone. Usage. Yes, I think so. I don't know. You ever seen Wally? Mm, they I predicted have. the future. What? The Where everyone's just phones? like, wa- they're, well, they're all like in those chairs, just watching things in front of their faces, oblivious to the world mm-hmm. around them. Right. That's already where we're, that's what I mean. At, it's yeah. like, what, because like can you really force somebody not to use something that's that's what i was saying with smoking like you can't stop somebody from smoking you can stop them from smoking around other people because it's still carcinogenic to people around to kids in a car it's like, to kids okay, in a this, house we're like it can make you hunched it can give you carpal tunnel it's not going to give you a brain tumor yeah it can make you nearsighted but all of those things are not direct correlations to lung cancer that kills your kid from secondhand smoke. Like yeah. That's like the more nefarious That it's like, part. okay, well, you get to choose your own choice. Like, you're allowed to use something that's damaging. Like, people will drink alcohol. It's not good for them. You can't, yeah. like... Of course, and even like, that is killing so many more people. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, the texting and driving, but that is what they've regulated it. Totally. Yeah, that's driving. when you're like, you okay, could hurt somebody else. Right? Like, you're Because are you're just on your phone you're not hurting anyone but yourself and therefore it might be harder to regulate. So I think, I don't know, it just becomes about like If education. only it was giving carpal right. tunnel to those around you somehow or like giving, <laughs> like if you were making others nearsighted, like yeah. not that that's like a bad thing, but like you just get glasses. But like, yeah. is there like, there's no way that it's actually. I think maybe like it may just be cultural. There might be a reckoning where people realize like this is actually unenjoyable. But it's so hard if yeah. we already are realizing that and we oh, can't quit. I think what could be like the point of like regulating is how not only cell phone companies, but like app designers truly do make the them to be addictive. Yes. And I think that is somebody else having a negative impact on you that you may not be aware of. And that is important that not only for kids, but for adults. That Did like, you know 
that the Instagram and TikTok, I've really noticed this on TikTok, are designed that every time you check it, the notifications come up for a like. So they'll hold your likes and spread them out so that every time you check, there's a like. Mm. And I notice that on TikTok. Every time I go, if I open it, and then I close it and I open it 10 seconds later, this all my notifications are the same. Yeah. They're still showing up red going, you've you been commented this things. much. And then yeah. it's like, no, you just told me that. I thought it's supposed to go away once you've right. checked. It doesn't. And like, they wanna they show you something. Yeah, and Instagram, they hold it. So say you like posted a photo like yesterday and mm -hmm. all the like likes see are slowing down. Then when you check, it'll say this person liked it. And then say, the, like your other friend also liked it at that time frame, they would hold the, that person's mm. like, so that the next time to you go on, it's like your other liked friend liked it. it. Yeah. yeah. So it's sneaky. like, that is like, they know That's what the they're doing. That's the kind of stuff that I think could actually be like controlled. Or at least like d those companies should be told like they can't do things that are like negatively impacting people's addiction to their products, right? Yeah. In the same way that like you're allowed to go gamble, but there is a, a lot of education around it and there probably are laws around like what you can do but it always always this balance of like those like gambling weirdly makes money for the government as well and then also is like a powerful institution with a lot of money that's up against like f trying to like stop laws from being implemented it's like all these social media apps are huge and yeah. they're owned by huge companies that influence politics really so i don't know i don't know where it will end part of me wonders if like eventually like the social media era just becomes boring i'm not saying it will go away it'll probably evolve into something that we're not predicting well tiktok right now. was such a like slap mm -hmm. in the face because it's like i didn't think it could get worse and then yeah. it did our addiction yeah that's why i wonder like not that i think that the um what are the goggles called like the google or the iphone the like, like vr, VR stuff thing? yeah i could see like in yeah. a way that kind of makes sense as the next iteration where it is if it can become seamless like obviously google glass tried it it failed it's like it's too early but if there's a world where you just wear normal glasses and suddenly you have all these extra inputs where you're like oh i can be more productive i can just like see my email pop up here i don't need a cell phone anymore but then you're like living in a different world okay i'm like such a tech skeptic but like good lord good luck uh, with what that well what do you mean i don't know i'm just like i feel like we've been talking about v i don't know i don't Dude, know that's ar that I i'm was not marquez brownlee but it's like when they showed that vr headset thing i was oh, like oh yeah. my god we've been talking about this for years i agree i think like vr is i'm but not saying that's it will never happen maybe like eat our words like yeah i think i think for sure ar will play more of a role ar augmented reality so remember when we were like uh We've test driving truly that done videos on this. Oh my God. vehicle, that electric vehicle. Yeah. And like, not that this is full augmented reality, but it was like projecting for the driver stuff onto the glass windshield so I could see more I information. I still think that's so not interesting. It wasn't that, that's not that interesting or necessary, but like I could see a world where like people already have watches that show them notifications. So why not their glasses? Right? Like, like you mine wear that glasses. I'm wearing right now. Yeah. It could just be like. Oh, every time you get a text, it's going to pop it's up It's just here. like so sci-fi movie from the 90s that it feels funny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so like any old movie is like the future and it's mm -hmm. like them looking yeah, through. Like right. it, there's something about it that I'm like, but why? Like the idea of our phone and like even like it's so interesting. It was like Facebook posting all of our goddamn photos, our mm -hmm. like our updates, like our little like Facebook like updates like that became Twitter like it all happened in this really interesting way that like but wasn't I, re obvious. I remember when our first friend got a Blackberry when we were in university I remember being like that is so stupid why would you ever want to check your email on your phone like I remember being like just like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard so sometimes <laughs> I have to check myself when yeah. I'm like that's dumb that's yeah never. sorry but I mean that's what I even I'm kind of trying to say it felt like all the things that ended up taking over our brains were things that we were like, that's weird. Whereas we at the time would have been like, maybe glasses that like look at, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's something <laughs> yeah, we can't that predict that's it. Like, we don't know. Yeah. And it, yeah. It feels like, Oh yeah. Checking email on your phone. What a boring, dumb thing. And then you're like, Oh, wait a second. That is the most revolutionary thing. <laughs> like in a weird way, like that's the beginning of the end yeah. was checking email on our phone. Mm -hmm. That opened the floodgates. Yeah. But, but I do feel like, TikTok has done something scary because it's mm -hmm. so simple. It's like, oh, oh, we don't give you a choice about yeah. what you follow. Oh, we're going to make everything so short. It's like, 
they're doing these things that we all would have been like, yeah, of course that's going to be like worse for us and make us more addicted and really scary. And the algorithm is just going to be so good. But then we're all just like, LOL, it's so fun. Like, it's so (laughs) weird. Like, it's just like, oh my God. Like if once someone figures out what will work to be the next thing to make us more addicted to a phone technology, it's just, it's going to work because we don't have everyone gravitates to it because yeah. it's like enjoyable and our brains aren't evolved to deal with this. Like they're yeah. not, they're evolved to be bored and they're evolved to have random stimuli of sex and food make you feel really good. Yeah. So like, I think I know it's going to be in your video, but I think we maybe should do an episode on the pod about, have we already done this? Just like advice on even for ourselves on how to control phone use. Yeah. 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 Like what is the research there? What can we, what practices can we put in place for it? Cause I just think like, I want to learn how to do that. And, but no, it's the worst part about it is I've done all this research on it and then I try and then I fail and I'm like, well, that's relapse. I'm addicted. Like yeah, it doesn't feel good when you fail. True. But, but like, I've still been thinking about it. that more because I feel like there's other things that I try and then stop, you know, like you try to learn a new skill, you try to build new structure and habits and then you fail and then you start again. And it's like, I think that is also just part of life. Yeah, that's true. Like, yes, these are designed to keep you addicted and they're physically affecting your body. (laughs) Back to that title of this episode. Um, But like, it's normal to take a long time to either break a habit or build a new one. Yeah, that's and true. And so if you're trying to minimize your phone use, yes, there's like some extreme things that might help, like you're f- switching to a flip phone, but most people aren't going to do that. Yeah. So what are the things that you can always come back to to be like, okay, here are actual techniques that have helped. Like with smoking, where they were like, it's not about like how graphic images don't really help. Showing people what the problem is doesn't help removing it from the environment and making it hard to go get like having to go all the way outside and smoke or having yeah. to go somewhere to pick up cigarettes is actually like what yeah reduce smoking more yeah because even like the night like i've been trying to don't turn my phone on till 9 a.m and turn it off at 9 p.m that's so in your own control like yeah it would be so great if it they, relies like, on imagine motivation the government started hiring people who come and take your phone <laughs> like it's like that would be amazing like it's so crazy how much yeah. of this all comes down to you. your own yeah your yeah. own self-control yeah self-control and i do think there's so much stuff out there on the internet because i've been doing all this research that is so frustrating. Everyone's so high on their horse on YouTube. Like, I got a flip phone. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what are you doing now? Yeah. They're all like, I got a flip phone for that month and it changed my life. And then it's like, you definitely went on your phone in that month. Like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it's all a the productivity just, YouTubers yeah. are like, honestly, when I watch the video, I'm like, you're lying. Yeah, because the people who are okay with flip phones probably always had one to begin with. And I'm also like, you are so chronically online. You're a YouTuber. Yeah. You're lying. Oh, like, 100%. You've yeah. built a brand. And to do something for a month is like, cool now yeah. what yeah and 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 it it doesn't necessarily help if you're watching that and then you're unable to cuz like it's like we are addicted and mm-hmm. we it is out of control and if you do have a healthy relationship with your phone it's like that's a beautiful thing like mm-hmm. you should be so proud of yeah, yourself yeah ultimately i think that should be the goal is how do you like like some this doesn't matter to some people like some people don't have addiction to their phone but for people who feel they have an unhealthy relationship i think it is like how do you get to that equilibrium where it like you obviously can still use it for the reasons you like it but like how do you mm-hmm. have a positive relationship with it yeah we can get the most out of it i can just maybe in a bit just do the video based on all the because re- i did all the re- it's in the video <clears throat> it'll be in the video but. and it is interesting and it is like the most up-to-date research is not definitive and it's mm-hmm. all about your own willpower. The only time they sometimes have advice is like if your friends and family, like in a home or roommates, there's a big part of it involving other people. And meaning what? Well, there's a thing like there's a concept of physical binding of your phone, which is like actually giving your passwords to uh, a friend, which right. a lot of people have started to do. They say, I don't want to use Twitter for a month and they give their friend the password. And then that, embarrassing sort of moment of can I have the password back? They're too afraid to do and Mm. it works. But or like deviceless meals if you're a family. Mm. Like just making that a times when it's just like phones aren't allowed right now. Yeah. And and as like parents and kids and as like or roommates, like it's annoying to have to try and like police other people, but Mm -hmm. there were studies and situations where roommates did say like the nine AM to nine PM thing. Mm -hmm. Like at nine PM they all just turn off their phones and then they like make it kind of like a thing yeah it would honestly be harder alone because it's like who are you doing it for exactly if you so, have even yeah. roommates to even if like building habits with a family obviously it's challenging with kids because like they're not 
like probably at the same place mentally about wanting to stop yeah. but like it's easier as a group to like then hold each other accountable to like this was our yeah this is our arrangement yeah and it's just an hour or two without yeah. it like but yeah i think it'd be fun to like look more into that and it's I so would. hard like i literally can't and i've just been doing research on it and been trying and i just keep failing yeah and it's like it's sick. It's sick. <laughs> it's absolutely sick. I feel like but I say that do, every episode. But do like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> or like whatever you do. Check out our TikTok. Check yeah. out our. It doesn't Elder help that our job is this too, I think. Yeah. Like imagine. But I see lots of people that I know that, like, I wouldn't n- know enough to call them addicted, but you see people use their phones in times when you're like, okay, that's intense, you know? Like, what, to be around friends, friends at dinner yeah. oh and God, stuff. Yeah. Like, where you see someone just using their phone in front of you and like like checking in and out of conversations yeah. and you're like yeah. it is intense. Yeah, that like, is I think, such a I think specific it's feeling. hard for us to know if this is because of our job that we feel this way, but I definitely feel like lots of our friends no, also feel yeah, this way. For sure. So Oh my god. Okay. Well, yeah. Um let us know if you'd want an episode that is like a <laughs> rehabilitation. I'm like, maybe there's like someone interesting to reach out to who might like n- n- work in this space or yeah, like, like a Buddhist monk or <laughs> a, you know what I mean? Like a psychologist who maybe works yeah. with people yeah, or, or that or studies this. Cause I'm sure it's like a growing area of concern. It is. It is. All as the well as desire for a lot of yeah. like, it's interesting that we want to stop and it's still challenging. There's a lot of research happening right now. I know. Yeah. Obviously makes sense. Okay. Thanks for listening. And uh, yeah. Post. See you guys next week. Bye.